Very importantly, these are like the credits on a movie. Um, here's my camera person and our general manager, Taylor, as we survive through all this craziness. So I wanted to give her full credit that she does great camera work. All right. So anyway, week five. So I'm starting out up in the olive grove because I'm going to show you how we maintain grapevines. But I've learned a tremendous amount from this 140 year old olive grove. And one of the things I'm going to show you is this is what we call a sucker. And so here, just this giant trunk. And so why is this tree wanting to produce these new trunks? And what that is, is the bottoms are very healthy, but the tops are feeling old. So because of that, in the old days, hundreds of years ago, they would cut these trunks to keep this olive tree producing at its youth. So trees produce, vines produce, youthful. So the reason you see so many old trunks on an old, vineyard, uh, old orchard like this is in the old days, that's what they would do. Now, we would never do that for any of you that have ever been here for a wedding or a concert. Um, the primary purpose, I always say what my best crop is, um, is sitting up here under these beautiful old trees. But they would be more productive if we would cut them off. So now I'm down in the vineyard. And here what we have is a 25-year-old Cabernet. It's on rootstock that we call 1103. This is called Clone 7. It means that these, the original wood from this came from Bordeaux. And if you look in here, this vine is just perfectly healthy. Every one of these shoots is healthy. It looks great pretty much 100%. has one little bad spot right here that I'll kind of show for Taylor. Um, but for the most part, for a 25-year-old grapevine, looks really good. All right, now I'm just right next door to that plant. Well, what's going on here? So what happens is we prune these grapevines, we create cuts, and there are natural diseases to the trunk that spread in the, in the rainy season. And so that trunk disease can get in here and actually kill this top of this vine. But look what Mother Nature's doing. She's anticipating that problem, just like those old olive trees. And now we have left this sucker from last year so that we can replace this vine rather than replacing the whole vineyard. Because if we replace the old vineyard, we'd replace this vine with it. And one big problem with replacing that, this block is in contract with Gary Eberly at Eberly Winery. Um, he puts our name on a bottle and calls it Vineyard Designate. And he's very happy with what's happening here. And if I was to tell Gary, hey, guess what? I'm going to replant my vineyard in five years from now. Come back and buy from me again. Might not happen. So he wants me to maintain this vineyard as best I can. So David, our trusty winemaker, is going to do this demonstration for me. So what we're doing now, we've grown this up. Now I'm going to show you how David's going to cut off that trunk. So we just came about eight plants down. David just cut this trunk. If Taylor comes in here and shows a close up again, way better. This is early. We caught this, see that darkness. We got all this healthiness over here. We have all this healthiness over here. We have this new trunk that now we're gonna tie off. You can see how crazy it was. Here's the old arm that we have to now get out of that wire, which would take a whole video if we did it. But we will train this up just like we did that. And I would say we've got a 90% chance that this vine will, will, will be saved. So now this is the idea. And why it's important is 25 year old roots go way down in the soil. They go into different flavor profiles in the soil, which is important for us in winemaking. They, they, they take heat better. So if we have a heat wave, those old roots that are down in the ground is important to, to everything. Now look what's happened to this vine. This was last year, the same size as what I'm showing you down there. And so the reason that this new trunk comes up so fast is it's got 25 year old roots to be able to support it. And now look what we have. This is my dream of this working. It doesn't always work, but we caught this before the disease got down. We cut the disease out almost like you would a cancer, even though it's a fungus. And now this grapevine with those big old roots has produced a brand new, 
healthy grapevine, young tops. Look at how prolific it is. Look at how, how much fruit's on here. Flavors from the soil. Stability and, and that from the soil. So this is what's so critical about trying to keep the old roots and see if we can. Now, if the roots are diseased, this would not be a good option because we would lose that. But our roots are healthy. That's not where the problem occurs. The problem occurs from, from cutting these vines to prune them and then they get, are susceptible to disease. So you might say, well, why do we prune them? If we didn't prune this grapevine, these canes would go all the way over to that big pine tree over there. So we have to keep them in a zone where we can work on them.